Hello and welcome to Mastering Quantum Mechanics Through Problems. My name is Dr. Jacob Hudis, and today I have an exciting quantum mechanics problem to discuss with you. Understanding Heisenberg's uncertainty through the quantum harmonic oscillator. Here's the problem set up. The questions for the problem are on the next slide. Consider the following wave function associated with the lowest energy of the one-dimensional harmonic oscillator. This is the wave function. It's written in the position Amazing. basis. Wow. The position space wave function represents the probability amplitude of finding the particle in a small interval around x. The magnitude of phi of x squared is the probability density. If you're given phi of x, you can always get phi of p using the Fourier transform. This is how you do it in any quantum mechanics problem. Bingo! In quantum mechanics, momentum and position are complementary. This wave function represents the ground state energy, but since it's in the position basis, it corresponds to a spread of many different positions. The parameter b relates to the system's characteristic length scale. It measures how spread out the wave function is. Both phi of x and phi of p represent the same wave function, just expressed in different bases position and momentum. Before I go through the questions of the problem on the next slide, I want to make a few comments about the harmonic oscillator and how often it's used in quantum mechanics. Harmonic oscillators are fundamental in physics because they model many systems. The harmonic oscillator describes an object that experiences a restoring force proportional to its displacement from equilibrium. In quantum mechanics, some systems that the harmonic oscillator can be used to model are phonons and crystal lattices, vibrational modes of molecules, quantum fields in quantum electrodynamics, superconducting Josephson junctions, and this is just to name a few. There are many others. And here's the problem that I'm going to be working out on the next several slides. Part A. Calculate the momentum space probability amplitude phi of p by performing the Fourier transform of the given position amplitude phi of x. So we're given the wave function phi of x, and we want to convert the wave function from the x basis to the momentum basis. It's a basis transformation. Part B, plot the probability density, the probability of finding a particle at position x per unit x, and the probability of finding the particle at momentum p per unit p for various values of b, where b is a parameter which is in the wave function. C, determine the expectation value of x, that's the average position, and its corresponding uncertainty. This is what is known as the uncertainty in x. Part D, find the expectation value of momentum as well as the uncertainty in momentum. And finally, evaluate the product, the uncertainty in x multiplied by the uncertainty in p, and demonstrate that it's independent of the parameter b. Question A asks us to calculate the momentum space probability amplitude. This was given to us. This is the position space probability amplitude. The Fourier transform is a basis transformation that converts a wave function from the position basis, where it describes a particle's location, to the momentum basis, where it describes the particle's momentum. This formula is the Fourier transform, and this is the way that you always do it in quantum mechanics. If you want to convert from positional momentum basis, this is the formula you use. This is in one dimension. If this were in three dimensions, this momentum in the exponent would be a vector, and this x in the exponent would be a position vector. For our particular problem, we need to replace phi of x with the phi of x that we were given. The momentum basis wave function is equal to some constant times the Fourier transform, which is the integral from negative infinity to plus infinity, times these plane waves multiplied by our wave function, which is e to the minus x squared over 2b squared. Now it's just a matter of performing this integral. We can do a substitution and let y equal x over b. Then the integral looks like this. The exponent of the integral is minus i p b y over h bar minus y squared over 2. So I can complete the square. Parentheses negative of this is what's in the exponent of the integral. Completing the square is just a way of taking what you have and writing it in a different form. I can complete the square, which means that this side and this side are exactly the same. So now I can plug this in to the exponent. I recommend that you follow through the math and do all these steps on your own, on paper on your own, because this is a good problem to solve and all the steps are written out clearly here. Ultimately what you get, this is phi of p, the momentum state wave function. It's equal to some constants that don't depend on y times this integral, which does depend on y. Now I can do one more substitution. I can make a variable z equals y plus ipb over h bar, and then the integral becomes this integral and this is a Gaussian integral, so we know the solution for the Gaussian integral. The nature of the Gaussian function is that it decays extremely fast as z goes to plus or minus infinity. The contributions from these small imaginary shifts are negligible when compared to the infinite real part of the limits. This is a known integral, and this is just equal to the square root of 2 pi. Therefore, this 
is the momentum state wave function. We've done it. If you're given the wave function in the position basis, you can use this Fourier transform to get the momentum basis wave function. This is important to understand and commonly done in quantum mechanics. This is the position basis wave function and this is the momentum basis wave function. The result shows that the width of the Gaussian appears in the denominator for phi of x, but moves to the numerator for phi of p, illustrating the relationship between the position and momentum space representations. For part b, we want to plot the probability densities for different values of the parameter b, and I've done that here. This is the position basis wave function, and this is for b equals to 0.2. When b is equal to 0.2, the particle is localized in position, it's at a position close to zero. But the momentum basis wave function is spread out. A more localized wave function in position space results in a broader spread in momentum space and vice versa. This demonstrates the uncertainty principle in action, Fantastic. where localization in one space leads to delocalization in the other. Part C of this problem asks us to calculate the average value of x and the average value of x squared, as well as the uncertainty in the measurement of the position x for this particle. These are important calculations that are done frequently in quantum mechanics. So this is a good problem to learn and think about and to understand for this reason. In this case, the state of the particle is in an eigenstate of the Hamiltonian, but not of the position operator. This means that the particle is not localized at a single position, but rather exists in a spread of possible positions. The Hamiltonian consists of both position and momentum operators, which don't commute. This is the origin of the uncertainty principle. If someone measures the position of the particle in its ground state energy, they won't get the same value every time. Instead, the measurements will vary around an average value and there will be some spread. To calculate the average x value or the average position value, if you have the wave function and position basis, you take x times psi squared dx, where psi squared is the probability of finding the particle at x. This is a standard formula you should look into and think about it if you don't understand it. So the average value of x is equal to zero, acephysics.org, math and physics tutoring with Dr. Hudis. Because x is an odd function and p of x is an even function. If I want to find the average value of x squared, I do the same thing. I take x squared times the probability of finding x where this is psi squared. I didn't actually solve this integral in detail, but the answer is the average value of x squared is b squared over 2. The uncertainty in x is equal to the square root of x squared minus the square root of x squared, and so this is equal to b over the square root of 2. If we make a measurement in x, it's going to have some spread, and that spread is equal to b over the square root of 2. b is a parameter that's in the wave function. Part d asks us to find the average value of momentum and the average value of momentum squared. This calculation is just like the calculation for the average value of x, but now we're going to use the momentum basis wave function. Perfect. We could actually use the wave function in the position basis, but in that case, the momentum operator would be minus ih bar d by dx. In the momentum basis, the momentum operator is simply multiplying by p. When we do the integrals, we get the average value of momentum is equal to zero, and the average value of momentum squared is equal to h bar squared over 2b squared. If you're very interested in quantum mechanics, I recommend that you go through and compute these integrals, it's good to know how to do these. This tells us that the uncertainty in p is h bar over the square root of 2 multiplied by b. Finally, the problem asks us to calculate the uncertainty in x multiplied by the uncertainty in p, and this is Heisenberg's uncertainty relation. And if you do that, you take the value that we got for the uncertainty in x, and you multiply it by the uncertainty in p. The b's on the top and the bottom cancel, root 2 times root 2 is just 2, and that tells us that this is equal to h bar over 2, which is independent of b. The result implies that if you try to measure the position of a particle with very high precision, that's when delta x goes to 0, the uncertainty in the momentum becomes extremely large. This is the essence of the Heisenberg uncertainty principle. acephysics.org, math and physics tutoring with Dr. Hudis.